Hi everyone, what's up? Josh here from Alternative Brewing, and today we're diving into the world of cold brew. With a brew down between two heavyweights with the Hario cold brew pot going up against the Toddy cold brew system. And ultimately, it really does boil down to your preferences. However, I'm here to help you find that perfect cold brew setup that aligns with those preferences. And before we dive into the nitty and the gritty, if you're all about the perfect cold brew at home, you're in the right place. Whether you are a brewing novice or a seasoned coffee pro, we've got some insights for you. So grab your favorite mug, sit back, and let's spill the beans on these two cold brew contenders. It's time for the Hario Cold Brew Pot versus the Toddy Showdown. Let's do this. Let's begin by taking a closer look at the Toddy Cold Brew system. This is the robust player in this lineup, and it has a substantial two and a half liter capacity. So the Toddy is designed for those of you who like to brew in bulk. And it might be a bit bulkier in appearance, but that extra size means you can prepare a good amount of cold brew to last you throughout the week. The Toddy also stands out for its filtration method, and it employs both a paper and a fabric combination, resulting in a clean and smooth cup of concentrated cold brew. And in terms of workflow, it is a bit more involved than some other systems, but its trade-off is you can produce larger batches. And this system is suitable for those of you who prefer to make a concentrated brew that can then be stored and diluted as needed. The Hario Cold Brew Pot on the other hand, this is the sleek contender in this comparison. It's super compact and it has that ready to go workflow straight out of the fridge. Now, it holds its own ground with a full one liter capacity and that slim design won't hog the counter or fridge space either. And it makes a great fit for those of you who prefer a more straightforward approach to brewing your coffee. And that's what sets the Hario apart, is its simplicity. With a fine mesh inbuilt filter, the brewing process is as straightforward as it comes and there are no intricate steps. All you need to do is add water and coffee and let it work its magic. And the result is you get a clean, crisp cold brew that's ready to go straight out of the fridge. So with that, and using that old cliche of here's some I prepared earlier, I'll have to get it out of the fridge. I did make a batch on each yesterday, so let's cover off the workflow on each, and then we'll come back and talk about the flavor profiles that each create. So the toddy does demand a bit more retention during the setup. The first thing you want to do is add the plug to the bottom of the drain. Next, we'll install the tightly woven fabric filter into the inside of the toddy. It is a tight fit, but it does squish in there, and this eliminates any grounds getting into the end brew. It also allows you to brew with or without the addition of a paper filter. For this instance, we will use a paper filter, and all you have to do is open this paper filter up and place it inside the toddy, ready for your water and coffee. Here I fill the toddy up with water from the brew container so I get the right amount of water each time and avoid a nasty mess later on when decantering it. I pour some water in first so the grounds don't stick to the filter, add my coffee and then pour the rest of the water in over the top, give it a gentle stir to ensure the grounds are now fully saturated. Before closing up the bag, I place the lid on and we're done. And with the Hario Cold Brew Pot, with its separate filter, this holds a maximum of 100 grams of ground coffee. And for best results, I would always use the full capacity of water and coffee with the Hario Cold Brew Pot. You can remove the bottom of the filter here for an express way to remove the grounds when cleaning them up. And with around 1.3 litres of water, I add about half of this to the pot initially, then add the grounds to the filter basket, placing this into the top of the pot. I then pour the remaining water on top of the coffee, and this ensures that all the grounds get saturated and begin to brew straight away and further advance the brewing cycle. You may have to let the water settle at the lid before slowly topping it up again to the full amount. And with both of these done, it's off to place them in the fridge for 12 to 24 hours. All right, and we're back. After 24 hours, no less. Now, 
there is something to keep in mind here. And that is from my experience, there's real no benefit to steeping the coffee beyond 24 hours. Also to note, if only doing 12 hours, and if it is a reasonably dry and not very humid climate, then it is okay to leave both of these on the bench overnight. But for consistency, reliability, and obviously there are concerns about mold forming in that time, I find it best to just place these in the fridge whilst brewing and certainly while storing them. So what we're left with is the filters are still in place, everything is still as it is. The Hario cold brew pot, well, all you need to do with this is remove this filter out of the pot. And of course, some of the water has soaked up into the grounds, but you're not going to be able to completely remove all that water. So we just have to work with what we've got. But however, with that done, you are good to go. This works great for pouring straight into your cup as well. And obviously this pot is perfect for placing into the fridge door. See how simple that was? The toddy on the other hand, we're going to have to decant what's inside this brew chamber into our personal decanter. And I do like this, it's quite a great looking jug, but we're gonna to have to pop out this little plug from the bottom to allow it to drain into the container. Like so, just gonna pull this. And let it drain out. All right, that actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. Um, it's still dripping a little bit, but I think there's really not that much more that's coming out. There we go, there was a surprise. Maybe there is a little bit more in there. Let me just lift this bag, see if there's something in there that I should know about. So what you're seeing there is the sediment that has gotten through the paper filter, but you can see there that the fabric, tightly woven fabric filter is doing quite a good job at holding back the finer sediment. And it's blocking all of that and stopping you to get through the final brew, which is great. No, I think that's all done there now. Set that to the side. Toddy. Oh, oh that smells rich and sweet. It's almost tasting time, I think. It smells a little bit more chocolatey, a little bit more licorice -y even. Interesting, that smells different. I will talk quickly about their ratios because I've used different recipes with them just to uh, allow you to understand and see the differences between the two. Now, you can see that is not a full canister there, although I did use the full amount to begin with. And, and same with the Hario cold brew pot, the coffee has soaked up some of that. And like I said, it's still slowly dripping, but it will take forever to completely drip out. But coffee is able to soak up twice its weight in water. Now that means if I use 100 grams of ground coffee, it's able to soak up 200 grams of water or 200 mils of water. And you're kind of fixed obviously with the Hario cold brew pot, being able to place in 100 grams of coffee is pretty much the maximum. And about 1.2 liters of water in the canister itself. That equates to around a ratio of one to 10. So one part coffee to 10 parts water. And that's the recipe I used with the Hario cold brew pot, is a one to 10. With the toddy on the other hand, this is a ratio of a one to six. So it's quite, it's a lot more concentrated than the Hario cold brew pot. I, in this recipe, I used 250 grams of coffee to 1.5 liters of water, which almost makes it look like I've pretty well brewed the same amount of coffee here. Probably ended up with about 1.1, 1.2 liters of concentrated coffee, and I've used 250 grams of coffee in here. And you're not really that limited to the amount of coffee you can use. So you could play with any ratio with the toddy where you could be placing 500 grams of coffee to one liter of water to a ratio of like a one to two. Like that would be an espresso ratio and you would be making a seriously strong coffee. Noting though that you are going to soak up a lot of water from that. So if you were to place in uh, 500 grams of coffee to a liter of water, 
you get a ratio of one to two, but the coffee will actually soak up almost half of the water you place in there, and you might only get 500 mils of coffee out that. And that's, that's pretty close to a ratio of a one to one even. So pretty strong. Curious to see how these two taste. Oh, and they look quite different. Like there's a richness to the toddy that's just not in the Hario cold brew pot at all. Let's just give them a try and see what they taste like. I'll start with the Hario cold brew pot. Oh yeah, this is like a this is like a drip cold brew almost. Super refreshing, super clean. It has like a rich rounded flavor, caramelly at the end, kind of like toffees and caramels, kind of lingering on the palate, but it's like super refreshing. Like I feel like it's very clean off the palate. I don't think I would want to dilute this too much. That's quite enjoyable just on its own. So I've got around almost 900 mils from the toddy using 100 grams. There is a big question when it comes to how much can I drink? What's what's uh, one coffee's worth of cold brew? And it basically, for something like the Hario cold brew pot, I would say it's almost half to a full cup, depending on your, uh, your capacity of drinking coffee and caffeine. It's probably about half to a full cup from this sort of brew ratio will make you feel like you've drunk a good single to double shot of coffee from like a cafe, like a 12 ounce coffee with a double shot in it. Half a cup to a full cup of straight cold brew like this. Now you could probably dilute it even further or add some ice and it's probably gonna be the same effect. The toddy on the other hand, this is close, like the flavor experience from this, it's close to like, almost like a watered down espresso. Like it's very intense, like in magnitudes. But I enjoy it because it's sweet. This is not sweet, it is like, this is the same coffee by the way. This has like some caramel notes to it, but they're like toffee and caramel kind of mixed together, but they're very subtle and, and, and they kind of like clean over the palate. Whereas I can still taste this. This is kind of coating my mouth. It's a little bit darker, I would say, of flavor. This is not something I would want to drink too much of in terms of just straight. You definitely want to kind of go ahead and dilute this. By how much, I'm not too sure. But we should do that experiment in a second. I'm gonna work out how much of the toddy will make a similar cup to the Hario cold brew pot cup. Just, just by taste alone at the moment. Let's do this. All right, so with some fresh water and a set of scales, that's gonna be important in this scenario. I'm going to, just gonna tip that out. Uh, I'm gonna pour out, this is my base right here of 150 mils. This is delicious. This is great by itself. I wanna know, can I make a drink similar to this from the toddy? And the maths says I need 25 mils, around 20 to 25 mils. That's literally like an espresso ratio. 150 mils we're aiming for. Now that actually looks like the same color now. Pretty close. Oh, actually the Hario is kind of winning on color. Mm. Again, way too weak. The maths was wrong. Let's do this. Let's go 50 mils. Let's go 60 mils to 110 mils of water. Color wise, pretty close. Maybe a little bit darker on the Hario again. Oh, close. Yeah, that's really close now. Okay. Strength wise, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to like equal the strengths out. Probably go a little bit more even again. Maybe like 70 mils. Oh, I'm going crazy here. All right, 70 mils of toddy to the rest in water to 150 mils, 80 mils. So it's like a one to one almost. How's that? Oh, that's, colors are almost spot on there. Let's, in the, let's hope that the flavor's gonna be the same. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's a one to one almost. Interesting. Okay, although I only have like 800, 900 mils of this, I can drink it straight because it's the most enjoyable way to drink this. I don't think I would wanna dilute this down too much more. It is really delicious by itself. Mm. However, this drunk straight, honestly, I don't think it's everybody's jam at all or anybody's jam. You definitely want to dilute this down. And if I'm trying to get it to what I prefer from the Hario cold brew pot, 
I have to dilute it down a one to one using the ratio that I did for the brewing. Now, I mean, like, obviously the, the options are endless with your toddy. Like, you could do any ratio and then you're gonna have to work back to find out what your flavor preference is. This is just a guide and it's certainly not the only way to be using the toddy, but that's pretty close to an enjoyable cup of coffee similar to that of the Haria Cold Brew Bot. Does it taste different though? Yes. This tastes like a very nice clean drip brew or a filter coffee, whereas this, this because it's being used from a heavier concentrate, this almost feels espresso based. So it's like a cold espresso based coffee, whereas this is a cold filter based coffee. Interesting. And if I had to choose, I would probably choose the Hario Cold Brew Pot just because, just because of that flavor preference of mine, to be honest. Let's talk about some of the considerations and potential pitfalls, first with the Toddy Cold Brew system. Certainly one thing to note is that the Toddy setup is a bit more involved, especially with the draining process, obviously getting it right, demands a bit more patience, and the reward though is a concentrated brew. However, that use of paper filter and the fabric filters, while enhancing the flavor, it can also mean a bit more of a cleanup. And just to quickly go over that, the cleanup is you're going to be removing this big paper filter in the bottom, which I'm just gonna dump into the bin now. You're obviously gonna be washing this out, but the thing that I would find the most challenging is washing and rinsing out this fabric filter. Now, this over time is going to just build up more and more silt. I've heard of people boiling them, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to replace these, you're going to have to replace or get new paper filters. So you're kind of locked into that cycle of purchasing more and more things with the toddy. However, at the same time, with all that workflow, with all that extra work that's required, you can make quite a lot of coffee. Whereas with the Hario Cold Brew Pot, you just need to grab that filter and undo the bottom of it and then knock out those grounds into the bin. And then all you're left to do is to rinse that filter out, give it a nice warm rinse under the tap and dry it up, as well as obviously cleaning the glass container of the Hario Pot itself and you're done. Now, the pitfalls with the Hario Cold Brew Pot, while the Hario is a breeze in terms of the setup and the cleaning, there is a smaller capacity to it, so it's not ideal for those looking to brew in large quantities. Also, the fine mesh filter, where is it? Right there. This does allow a little bit more sediment in the cup, which you'll find at the bottom. Now, it's not gonna be in the rest of it, but uh, you will find as you get further on down, uh, you will find a little bit of sediment in this compared to the toddy whereas the toddy generally keeps super clean because you have a double filter in them. And to honestly bring this all together and talk about these brewing champs and who they're best for, I think if you are just starting out in coffee or are time poor or just looking for that daily refreshing fix, it's hard not to go by the Hario Cold Brew Pot. And this might be your perfect match as it is straightforward, easy to use and delivers on that lighter, crisper flavor of coffee that you can drink and enjoy straight away. On the flip side, if coffee is one of your passions and you're a coffee enthusiast and you're certainly ready to experiment as there is quite a lot of movement in the ratios and the recipes you can use with a toddy, or perhaps you are entertaining a lot of people and you need a larger batch of concentrated brew that you can then serve to many people, then I think the toddy cold brew system makes that perfect choice and could be your go-to. It does require a little bit more attention, but the results of that bold, robust cold brew will last over time if it's just you or a couple of people drinking it as well. And honestly, each of these contenders has its own strengths. And that's why I said it really does rely on your preferences. So now I wanna hear from you. Have you tried either of these methods or maybe both? If you have, share your thoughts and experiences in the comment section down below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching to the end of this video. And if you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button, smash the subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. See you next time.